Today I'll be guiding you through the Greek campaign in Rome Total War. Your kingdom's divided up into three separate areas. Greece, Turkey and Sicily. First we'll look at Sicily. Your city here, Syracuse, is going to get hammered by the Romans and the Carthaginians, so building up your army there would be wise. Okie dokie, next we'll look at Greece. With Greece, you're surrounded by the Macedonians. They're extremely aggressive, so building up your defences and your armies would be extremely helpful. Taking care of them early helps you in the long term. Your cities start off really undefended, so building up defences and building up your armies in Greece will help you against the Macedonians and the people of Thrace. Your city in Turkey is really undefended, so building up your defences there will help you against the people of Pontus and the Seleucid Empire. Oh, and you don't need to do anything to Rhodes at the moment. Now would be a prime time to attack the Macedonian city of Corinth, while their army's out attacking Athens, the rebel neutral city. You can attack them. I usually like using ladders and you can see a Macedonian army getting built up to attack Thermon. Always remember to keep building up your armies in Sparta and Thermon. Now to Turkey, the um, Rhodes, the general in Rhodes is really experienced, and there are a lot of there are a lot of um, mercenaries on that island that you can recruit. So sending your general out of the um, city, clicking on the mercenary icon, you can get mercenaries. When you explore with your diplomat stationed near Peregrim, you'll see Sardis, a massive uh, Seleucid city. You can also see in near Syracuse a big the Ginian army and a Roman army. It would be wise to ally with the Carthaginians. You can turn against them later if you wish. But the Romans refuse to ally with you, so don't even bother. Now the um, Macedonians have decided to attack your army besieging Corinth. So the best option would be to retreat. Because the army that you said doesn't have the military capacity to defeat them. Reinforce your army with some Spartans and Hoplites and send that to attack Corinth. Then besiege the settlement. Now that you've built a barracks in Thermon, you should be able to start building some foot infantry to attack Larissa, the Macedonian city to your north. And in Sparta, upgrade your barracks so you can start constructing heavy infantry. What you should start doing in Turkey is to build up an army in Rhodes to send over to attack your the neighbouring rebel settlement. You can also um, negotiate with the Seleucid Empire. Maybe some trade and stuff. You may already know, but when you send a diplomat to a rebel army, you can bribe them 
and if they're a unit you can build, they join your faction. So, continue building up your army in Peregrine because you're gonna need it later. The rebel settlement that you should attack owns a wonder, and wonders give you special capabilities. This one um, takes 20% off unit training, no, off building construction time, so that will help you later on. And in Sicily, you should start building up a big army to attack um, the Roman settlement. As you can now see, the um, Romans have finally noticed that you're there and oops, and sent an army to attack Syracuse, so continue to build up your army there. Now you're ready to attack Corinth, so the assault here should be pretty easy. You have more than enough men to take on the small garrison there. I'll take this opportunity to show you about Greek combat. You may have thought it strange that I brought along peasants to a siege, but I intend to use them as disposable well, peasants really. I use peasants to scale walls because, to, well, to put the ladders up anyway, because they're weak and disposable. The only garrison they have is a general. Judging by the size of his bodyguard, he's probably only 19 or 20, so should be easy. Although the Macedonians do have reinforcements coming. The Greeks fight differently to other factions. They um, use a formation known as the Phalanx. The towers here shoot out arrows, which bother my peasants. But I'd rather my peasants get mowed down than my Spartans. What I plan to do is once I have my peasants scale the walls and open the gates for me, I'll send my general in to destroy the enemy general because phalanxes are excellent against horses. So I should be able to kill him quite easily. And then I'll send my Spartans in to wipe out the reinforcements. So that should work. Okay, my phalanxes are here. Inside the gate. And the Macedonians' reinforcements consist of some light phalanxes and some archers. The hoplites that I'm using though were, um, I wouldn't quite say heavy, but they're much stronger than militia. But the Spartans on the other hand, they are the elite hoplites. You could, instead of listening to boring old me, go and create some custom battles of yourself, playing as the Greeks, and get used to the Greek combat, rather than have me telling you. Unfortunately enough, I lost my general. Now 
now that the enemy reinforcements are broken and routing, I'm going to send my, um, the unit that my general was formerly in to directly attack the enemy, or well, the last of the enemy army, while my Spartans go around the side for a sneak attack. Now that we've captured Corinth, you can see that we have also captured a wonder. Zeus sitting on a chair. So, before you look at part two, you should have captured Athens. Larissa. Sardis and Harkluni Nessa Lunifi. You can also capture Messina. That's what I'll start off with the next one, so hope you found this guide to Greece helpful. Stay in tune for the next one.